so close. And so far. All right, A, what mush are we having for breakfast? We're having some chia seeds and some oatmeal and a little bit of lentil sprinkled in there and hopefully our blood sugars will just go straight this morning. Morning everyone, just a little update here. Um, Annalisa and I last night got in around 11 o'clock and so we spotted a church, decided to pitch our tents, woke up early, 6 a.m. But then the main, main thing today is that we are gonna try to hitchhike into the National Park. Wrangell St. Elias is right around the corner and it's home to some of the biggest glaciers in the world, which is awesome. Some of the highest points in North America. Huge, actually, volcanoes formed a lot of the park, just from yesterday's reading, and it should be incredibly awesome. Till then, any updates on Lisa? Um, <laughs> we're gonna get some coffee now. There happens to be a cafe across <laughs> the street. <laughs> and of course, as we start most days, with some coffee. So something I didn't mention is that Annalise and I were waking up in a kind of grumpy mood. You see, yesterday in Kenny Lake, we stopped by this convenience store and asked for a place where we could set up and have dinner. And halfway through cooking, the owner comes out and yells at us saying, What are you doing? This is so rude, so rude. And Annalisa looks at her saying, The cashier said I could cook here. And she immediately kicked us off the property and down the road. And that is why it was so remarkable to meet Patty the next day. Well, I'm just Patty Ryan. Just plain old Patty Ryan. <laughs> and where, where are we right now? Okay, we're in Kenny Lake, Alaska at the Golden Spruce Cabin. And espresso shop. <laughs> <laughs> Who tends to come into your store? Well, a lot of local people, a lot of Alaskans coming down to go fish, and uh, a lot of Europeans come to visit us. They like Alaska, and they like the elbow room out here. They like the Wrangell St. Elias Park. It's not too commercialized yet. Lots of nice folks out there. Could you describe what people would see or experience when they came in here? Peacefulness. A nice log cabin that my husband built. Started back in the 90s. We opened in 96. We do the little cabins out there, one in 30 days, from cutting down the trees, all beetle kill trees, to bringing them in and bringing them alive, making the cabin. But that was his dream, to always come to Alaska and build little log cabins. You did an awesome job. Is there a motto or quote you think to share? Something that you try to live by day by day? I try to be happy. I try to make everyone else happy. The more you smile, the better off you are. The most important thing. Live good. <laughs> live good. Deep that. I'll give you a little hug. As Eric and I pack up our bikes to leave, Patty comes out of the building and she tells us how much she appreciates seeing young people take advantage of life. And with that, we pedal away and we decide that we need to find a way to visit Patty on our way back towards Valdez. You uh, think of that climb? Uh, pretty intense. That first part I had to walk up. Grinding gear wasn't enough and the clip-ins make it difficult to get back on. So, But now we're at the top and it's snack time. <laughs> All the 
hills looked like different kinds of fur in the morning Dirty wool torn clouds blowing through the chinks in my day Neck deep in the brambles holding pieces of the beast Bring the dogs to the river where the sea used to be Radishes and butter, salt and animal fat There's birds in the hedges whether they are singing or not <laughs> Right outside our window <laughs> In case you couldn't tell, our hitchhiking plans yesterday fell through. But luckily, we bumped into Vicky and Randy, who invited us into their RV for breakfast. And how could we say no to that? So after they set off in their own direction to continue their journey around Alaska, Annalise and I decided to walk further down the road to hopefully get into the park. But as car and car passed us, we realized people weren't actually going all the way to McCarthy, but rather were here for dip netting season. This is Alaskans' right to catch reds or salmon out of the river, and the season had just opened. And Annalise remembered that the four soil geologists told us to check out O'Brien Creek to see what all the action was about. It was so hard to leave Patty's for the second time. And so when we finally pushed off around 4 p.m., Tim, Patty's son, offered to take our bikes up the hill. Now, some people call this cheating, but for us, it was a way to bond with Tim, whose daughter actually has type 1. Now, it's not every day you have two type 1 diabetic cyclists stop by twice. And we just help give him the confidence that his daughter will grow up and be able to do anything. People keep telling us there's no place like Valdez on a sunny day. And with mountains surrounding the harbor, it's no surprise that this place is called Little Switzerland. And there's no better time to be here since the pinks are migrating back to return to the hatchery in town. After seeing the beginning stages of how salmon products make their way around the world, our friend and sponsor, Peter, puts us up in a hotel so we can rest up for the ferry tomorrow. Eric and I have never missed a ferry, not once in our lives. So we're heading towards the terminal and we get there about 15 minutes early. But as it turns out, we're not able to board since we were supposed to get there an hour early. And since we're in Alaska, the next boat to Whittier doesn't leave for another two days. So close. So 
So we sit on the bench and we watch cars board the ferry, and it's really the most frustrating thing to watch. But then we spot this adorable otter, twirling around in the water without a care in the world. And he's doing somersaults in the water and chasing his tail, and his attitude really inspires us to make the most out of the day. So we swing our legs around our bikes and head back to the hotel and ask Lorraine, who sits behind the counter, if we can stash our bikes in the lobby while we go for a hike. And after hearing the story about how we missed our ferry, she ends up giving us two nights for free at the hotel. And it makes us wonder if we'll ever learn our lesson. And I know life, it ain't easy. I've come so far and I just can't give up now. There's a reason I'm alive, and I know it's worth the fight. And right now, I, I can't feel it, but I choose to believe it. I've got to change my mind, and it's going to change my life. It's four days later and we're at round two of trying to catch the ferry. So going down to the port and uh, waving goodbye to the Keystone Hotel. It's been a uh, home away from home here in Valdez. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully we don't miss the ferry this time. <laughs> <laughs>